hey guys welcome back to my channel um if this is your first time watching one of my videos i'm b um and i'm not gonna waste no more time um uh, i'm just gonna jump right into the video so i have been doing more like vlogging stuff but today i'm gonna do a story time hold on so i'm a hairstylist and i have put on my instagram story um, two different particular stories that I possibly wanted to share two of my like lengthier stories because I have a lot of stories but as far as like making it into a video these two would be actually worth watch sit down and watching so it was between um, an elderly racist client that I had and then um, the one I'm actually doing is a client tried to not pay for her services. She tried to leave without paying for her services. So I think it was like um, almost 30 people have voted for a, the client trying to like argue prices with me. And almost 20 have voted for the elderly like racist lady. But um, a lot of people also messaged me and they wanted me to do both which i am going to do the other one later hold on where's my phone i'm gonna be doing the other one later but i'm doing this one okay so i'm super excited um this has been probably almost three years ago so i'm gonna try to remember all the details that i can um but yeah i'm also going to be eating some seafood while i do this so i guess technically this is like like a mukbang type thing hold on let me send this message so yeah i already got my seafood I usually get like shrimp and crab, no, shrimp and long, shrimp and crab, but I just got, I got shrimp, potatoes, sausage, and eggs today. So I'm going to go ahead and lay all this out. turn my sound on oh they put corn in here i didn't really want corn maybe it just comes with it that's okay as long as they have the stuff that i do want i don't really care about the stuff that i don't i want to get all this laid out before before I start talking. And this is my first meal of the day, so I'm not gonna lie. And it's 3.44. So I'm not gonna lie, I might be um, doing the damn thing when it comes to eating this. Oh, I got a pose for my thumbnail. I don't know if that's cute or not. Is that cute? I'm a messy eater. So I'm going to go ahead and my cats are eating in the background. So if you are hearing that crunchy noise, that's them. All right. Oh, and I got the juicy flavor, which is like the lemon pepper, the Cajun, like all the sauces that they offer mixed together. And you can get mild, medium, or spicy. And I got medium. I probably should have got spicy. I don't think I'm gonna use gloves, but I just see those there. So, 
I feel so weird recording myself eating. So like, to start off the story, just a little like background. I am from a very small town in Kentucky. And so it's not like I'm in some bigger city. I don't live there now, but even the city that I live in now is not like super huge. Let me not bounce the table. Also, key part of the story, I was, I had to be like licensed for like six months. So I mean, like I had just graduated cosmetology school and got my license. <clears throat> six months, between like six to nine months at the time of the story. So I, I was a new stylist um i was young like <clears throat> 1920 um i love the salon i worked in oh i was a commission stylist so basically like starting off usually people like to do commission instead of booth rental because that way you're not like losing any money so your salon owner you kind of like work under them and they they make a percentage of what you make so if pay, someone pays me like a hundred dollars i'll get like 60 of 60 percent of that they would get 40 percent but they're also playing for all my su supplies and stuff like that so it's always you're always making money you're not out any money And you usually do that for like six to nine months after you graduate, like I said. So this had to have been like six to nine months after I graduated school. Um. So yeah, that's just the background. The salon that I worked at uh, is called Pollard 23. <clears throat> anyway, so... I'm trying to like not use too much hairstyle lingo so everybody understands what I'm talking about or at least explain it well enough so when you're first becoming a stylist it's a lot of sitting and waiting for walk-ins because predominantly your first clientele is going to be your friends and your family that's who's booking with you directly and then there's going to be people who are the salon's clients so they just like jump around but they stay within the salon for the most part they're usually not regulars or anything like that they're just come here and there um then you'll get the people that call and they're like i just i want to make an appointment just whatever the i heard this is a good salon just put me with the first styles you have available so me i'm working with all these ladies that's been doing this for like years lovely ladies so, nine times out of ten, I'm the first stylist available. So, I would get a lot of the walk-ins. A lot of the people who didn't have a particular stylist that they wanted to go to. They just wanted whoever was first and it was me. So, I'm not exactly sure if this client, we're going to call her Jezebel. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even remember her real name, to be honest. So Jezebel <clears throat> was a, she was either like the salon's client or a lot of times I think she went to my shop owner. Like she was one of my, shop, when she did come, like I said, she wasn't a regular. Cause keep in mind, I've probably been working at the salon around that six month mark and I hadn't seen her come in yet. So obviously, He needs some milk. She was like, she didn't come that very, come very often. Don't you even think about jumping up here right now. <sighs> Sorry, it's getting a little hot. Anyways. I believe she had called up there 
whoever answered the phone. We didn't have a front desk lady. So it was just kind of whoever was free to answer the phone and she would pick up the phone. Somebody put her on my book completely fine. Completely fine. You know, I'm trying to hustle, build up that clientele. I don't recognize her name. Once I seen her, I feel like I had recognized her around town, but not from in the salon. And like I said, I don't remember her name. So, so she'd be on my book for maybe like a couple of days or so, maybe like a week or two. But day of rolls around and I'm like waiting for it to come in. She was the only person I had that day. And my shop owner comes up to me and she's just like, just so you know, I've done Jezebel before, or she's been here before, either or. She's a little bit of a cheapskate. So that was red flag number one. So at this point, I was not nervous up until she said that. So my shop owner was basically like, just make sure you go over prices thoroughly with her and like ask her if she has a budget. Because another big thing that you learn when you get <clears throat> to get out on the floor like outside beauty school is if you haven't discussed the price with somebody um or they're like if they're a new client and y'all haven't discussed the price you need to ask them what their budget is because some people have no idea how much the actual service is and i'm not even an expensive stylist some people think i'm an expensive stylist but i don't think i'm expensive at all but some people I'm too expensive for. I get told that they don't want to spend that much money all the time. I get I have people who tell me that I need to raise my prices. So, anyways, at this point in my career, I have to basically I have to charge what my salon owner tells me to charge. Because like I said, I I'm not an independent stylist. I'm working under her. So she says that, and I'm getting a little nervous. So I don't know this lady. It seems like to me, Miss Jezebel likes to cause problems. So she gets there. And I wish I had more juicier stuff of what happened during the actual appointment. But all I remember is we actually had a decent conversation. She was very, very sweet. And in hindsight now, I feel like it was probably because she was plotting on what she was going to do to my little young new stylist ass the whole time. She knew. She knew. So she was just chilling. Well, her appointment, I mean her, I don't remember anything like not going smoothly. Oh, so. God, <laughs> hey. They didn't cut that sausage up good. Oh, I'm choking on the sausage. I'm choking on the sausage. When she got there, like I said, I've always been really good, I feel like, about discussing prices up front. At first, yes, it is a little uncomfortable because talking about money is uncomfortable. But I feel like the girls, my coworkers, really ingrained that in my brain of how important that consultation about money and about your goals for your hair is super important. Um, so she gets there. I'm like, what's your budget? I don't know what she said. Probably, she probably said like, stay under 100 to, I think she probably said stay under 100. Maybe like 115, okay? So around 100 to 115. To some people that's expensive, to some people that's not. I feel like that's very average for 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 this time period and for this location, I feel like that that was a very average price. Like there wasn't too many other places she was gonna go and get it for cheaper besides like the beauty college, which there's nothing wrong with going to the beauty college. I was like, okay, but keep in mind, this lady does not come regularly. So it's not like her highlights are grown out an inch. Um, she just needs her roots done, okay? She has like dark brown hair and her roots is grown out to like right here. And like the rest is blonde. So when you haven't got your hair done in months, 
and you're wanting to jump from zero to 100 of like super blonde but you have a budget you can't have both okay i can work with the budget that's not a problem i love working with people budget i feel like everybody deserves to get their hair done but not at my expense boo boo okay at your expense if you get what i mean like i'm willing to work with you my heart feels for people but this is a luxury service and so i feel like everybody deserves their get to get their hair done but at the end of the day you might just not be able to quite afford what you're wanting there's shit that i there's stylists that i would like to try in like bigger cities and i'm not gonna say i can afford like spending five six seven eight nine hundred dollars but i'm not going to because that's out of my budget that i want to spend and there's nothing wrong with that so anyways sorry about my little rant we go over budget now like i said i work under my salon owner so i have to follow her rules and her prices at this particular salon at this time my shop owner um so there's like i'm sure most of y'all have heard of like olaplex <clears throat> but other brands have their own version of olaplex and basically to sum it up it's a product that's got several steps and it's for preventing damage to your hair or repairing damage for your hair and a lot of them have a step that goes inside the color or inside of the lightener to prevent damage so at this particular salon this was not included in the service I'm filming a video. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. But it's not included in the price. Me personally now, I find it's too hard to explain to people why do you need Olaplex? Why do you need to buy damage? Why do you need all these different things? Because they don't know they don't know they're they either don't know they don't care they want to try to get it for cheap or they think that you're just trying to get over on them and make them pay more so when i became like on my own well in a different when i got my private room that i'm in now well actually either when i first became an independent stylist <coughs> excuse me <coughs> but still worked in a salon or when I got into a private room, I can't remember which one. I just raised my prices a little and everybody gets it. Like everybody gets it and it's included in the price and I don't have to worry about this. But it was optional at the salon. So I had told her like, you know, this is optional. I recommend it, but like, like I said, completely optional. <clears throat> and the particular thing that she got included into her it was joyco defy damage not olaplex it's joyco's version of like kind of kind of like olaplex not really so do her hair i'm gonna skip to the end of me doing her hair like i said it was a regular conversation did the consultation look sounded like we was on the same page told her i could work with her budget now I can't remember. I think she got like a full highlight tone and cut and the extra like additive in there had to be, it was whatever she wanted to be. Whatever the price is, that is what the price was at this point. <clears throat> so we're on the same page, fine conversation. I don't remember her saying anything rude, anything weird, anything out the way. We get to the end, and before I say anything, I'm human. I make mistakes. Sometimes I have to fix people's hair. Sometimes they don't fucking like it. Sometimes they don't fucking like it. It's exactly what they asked for. Sometimes they like it, but it's it wasn't what they asked for, but they're cool with I'm not perfect. But this was not the case, okay? If I did a bad job or it wasn't what we had discussed, I would just tell you because 
already said this is like almost three years ago and I was a new stylist so I would just be like I fucked up like I messed up and I had to fix it but no this her hair I did a good job and there's something that I would be proud of from what I can remember I remember being proud of it I was so excited about her hair I don't really even like doing blonde but when you first start becoming a stylist you just kind of have to do whatever's thrown at you and it looked really good really good it took me a long time and it looked really good i was proud of it it's probably something that i would be proud of today if i did it because i'm not afraid to say that i messed up i'm not afraid to say that if i had to like fix her hair and i was literally so excited <laughs> for her to see it because i just knew it looked so good it was so blonde so icy beautiful like it was the best her hair could have been with her budget you know what i mean like it looked great keep in mind and also she never really sent me pictures she never showed me pictures she just said she wanted to be like really really blonde i'm sure i asked her what tone of blonde she wanted to be and she probably said icy because everybody wants to be fucking icy which was fun because she pulled fine so she was icy <clears throat> And even as I was drying her and styling her, she wasn't really saying anything. She wasn't looking directly at herself in the mirror, but she was just talking regular to me. I was expecting her to see this stuff and be like, oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. Like, I love it, but no. So finally, I'm like, what do you think? And she's on the verge of a panic attack at this point. Literally like grown ass woman, probably in her thirties, like <sighs> keep in mind, I'm in a salon full of fucking people. Okay. And she's acting like this. Hold on. I'm in a salon full of people and she's like drawing attention to me. And so basically she's like, that she's not blonde and if this didn't end up the way that it ended up i wish i had pictures to insert for all she was like i'm not blonde and she, i just kept saying like what do you mean and like i was so confident in my work that i couldn't even take her seriously so i was like what do you mean and she's like, this just isn't blonde. So girl, eventually I just said, so girl, what color are you? Like, what color do you see? So when people see you, what do you... What do they say? Because there's no way I just spent hours bleaching your head. And you're not blonde. You're literally blonde. You're literally icy blonde, bitch. As blonde as I could have got you safely in one day on your budget. So, she, so then she's like, she keep going back and forth with me. We ain't making no progress. So I'm like, I apologize. Let me go get my salon owner. See what she can do. So I go get my salon owner. I'm thinking, oh shit, she gonna be mad at me. Like, I'm just nervous. Cause I never had nothing happen like this ever to me. And I haven't had anything really like this ever happen to me since. But I'm like, oh my gosh, she gonna be mad at me. So I go back there and tell her, I'm like, the girl says she ain't blonde. And my salon owner, she's very like professional, quiet, non really confrontational but like she owns a salon so she's gonna handle it like the best way that she knows how so i go get her she went out there she was riding for me okay i thought she was gonna be mad as fuck she went out there and looked that lady in her face i'll never forget this and was like so the lady she basically repeats what she told me like she's like i'm not one like when i my boyfriend boyfriend or husband i think it's boyfriend 
my boyfriend is just like expecting blog i'm like girl he can't even pay for your fucking hair appointment so why the the why he even got a say so on what you come home looking like so i'm just standing there and she's telling my salon owner they're going back and forth just she's just saying the same thing she's like i'm not blonde i'm not blonde i'm not blonde like so what what are you you're not brunette you're not black i didn't make you any darker like so my salon owner's trying to tell her like oh so yeah like i said she came out she was riding for me like the first thing that she said was i i seen your head she's like i you, she fooled the crap out of your head and when she said that i was like oh she's sticking up for me like she said fuck the customers right okay but like like I, i'm just gonna reiterate her hair looked good very good and blonde she was not solid blonde she was not solid blonde she wasn't she was heavily highlighted icy blonde keep in mind her ends were already solid so they just needed to be toned but her hair was it looked great okay it looked great so the girls is like my boyfriend's expecting me to come home on like and also she's just making a scene about it because at this point like everybody's staring at me i'm sweating i'm nervous <coughs> finally my shop owner's like look i don't recommend this but um since you just got your hair like heavily heavily bleached but i can have her go back in and bleach it <clears throat> some more but she was like it's gonna be an additional 50 dollars because i can't have my stylist working on you all day for free or for nothing because she was like she's been working on you all day and there's nothing wrong with your hair you just want more so the girl's like okay thank you thank you thank you and i'm gonna try to explain the terminology used for the technique that i did on her the best way i can so the first time that i did her hair i did traditional highlights with the foil full head heavy um very small section so it was a very nice lift toned her icy cutter and not to mention she let me style her whole head and curl it before she said anything so yeah and so my stylist went back there she was like wet balayage her and tone her with purple shampoo <laughs> so basically wet balayage is like all balayage means a lot of people associate it with the look of the grown out roots blended into lighter ends so like an ombre but not such a harsh line like very very blended but actually balayage is just a term used to paint that means to paint so you hold on my camera stop recording so you can get that balayage look without actually using the balayage technique but it just means to paint so basically and then wet obviously she just wanted me to go get her hair wet and paint the lightener on her hair and instead of using like a really nice toner like i used redken toner at the time she was like just put purple shampoo on that shit and call it a day so that's what i did got her wet i think i used like a clarifying shampoo to try to like lift that toner that i had just put on her hair that looked chef's kiss and then i do the wet balayage essentially i think all that happened with me doing that i think she just she asked for icy but didn't want icy i almost think she wanted that white trash trailer trash is that offensive do i get a pass because my i mean my mom always called herself white trailer trash I can say it. I'm half white. The fuck? So, trashy, like, box blonde. Like, damn near yellow. Like, my shirt. I think that's what she wanted. But for some reason, she was saying, like, icy. Because I will say, if you do somewhere hair icy or ashy, sometimes that it's still blonde, but it tends to look, like, 
darker it just comes off darker but it's really not it's just all about tonality um but anyways so basically i think all the lightener really did is strip all that nice icy toner that i put on there and then the purple shampoo just knocked it enough yellow to not be terrible but anyway so i do that i think she's apologizing but i think she's pissing me off because i think she just keeps she just keeps saying you're she's sorry but her boyfriend is just expect, expecting law i don't give a <laughs> i don't i don't give a your boyfriend and what he wants okay anyways so I take her back to the chair styler she loves it okay she loves it i'm not gonna lie i look better the first time because it was just toned better but whatever it was toned better the first time i mean so i just had a gut feeling i had a gut feeling when i brought her up to the front she was just gonna act a fool just by how she was like acting and things she was saying and the fact that she was so dramatic and was damn near having like a panic attack over nothing because like it'd be different if you look in the mirror and your hair is like fucked up okay but every anything can be fixed if your hair is not damaged nine times out of ten whatever happened to your head can be fixed for a certain amount of money or a certain amount of time but i did not mess up her hair she was just trying to get over me over on me she was trying to get like a two for one service she didn't want to come back for like a second appointment she was just trying to get them both there one time but anyways i had a gut feeling i was like something right so i go to the back i go to my shop owner i'm like girl i know you got a baby waiting for you to come get it i know i know you're running late but i was like listen I have a feeling this girl is not going to act, this grown woman is not going to act right when I come. I said, can you please just wait like a few minutes before you leave? So I take her, take this, I take Jezebel to the front. <clears throat> and my shop owner standing beside me. And I believe that my shop owner broke down the price. She was real big about breaking down the price for people and explaining to them why, what was what, and where all these numbers was coming from. So she's breaking that shit down for her. She. So she's telling her, she's like, the price, keep in mind, couldn't have been couldn't have been over 250 i'm surprised if it would be over 200 because like i said we had discussed the 100 to 115 i think was her budget but this was like three years ago but then remember my shop owner was like it's gonna be an extra 50 for her to re-bleach you retone you restyle you well we dry you restyle you it's gonna be extra 50 so that would have put her around like 165 but just like even if we're really speaking i worked on your bitch ass from morning until like what time i was supposed to get off so a whole days of work a whole day of work now i make like a whole day of work to me is like 300 to 500 plus okay less like on a bad day but 300 to 500 dollars a day sometimes more so I worked on you all day and you're complaining about 165. So anyways, she starts the, like the inducing a panic attack bullshit. I'm like, oh my God, is this really happening? My shop owner's like, kind of like, confused she's like that's not the, the price that me and her discussed then she accused me of charging her for extra stuff that she didn't need she was talking about the joy code defy damage she was trying to say that uh i used extra stuff on her that she didn't need she didn't ask for but bitch you did need it because your shit was raggedy and <laughs> let me stop talking about people you did need it 
and you told me that you wanted it and I told you it was extra price and why are we arguing over $15, 10 to $15? If that was gonna make you or break you, probably shouldn't have got your hair done when you got your hair done at your big grown age. So, um, she's basically saying like, accusing me of adding shit on there that I didn't tell her and that she didn't need it, that she didn't need and blah, blah, blah. But my shop owner's like, I think she literally was like, so are you trying to tell me to my face that I didn't tell you that it was gonna be extra for her to do extra? And the girl was basically like, yeah. She's like, you didn't say that, but yes, she did. <laughs> so there she goes with the <sighs> hyperventilating shit. <laughs> Just like about to crawl. And where the front desk is, like, the other stylist can't see you, but it's a thin wall. So everybody can hear you. So I'm, like, very, very uncomfortable. She's, like, thrashing around, like, moving around, like, like pacing and shit. I'm like, this bitch finna run for the door. And I probably would just let her punk ass go, because I already knew where she worked anyway. And I was going to get that fucking money. So, <clears throat> I'm like, is this bitch about to make a burn from her? And so we awkwardly just like go back and forth for a while. And she, oh, she was like dead ass. She was like, I don't have that money. She's like, I don't have it. She was literally like, I don't have the money to pay you. She's like, I don't have that. Like, I don't even have it in my account. First of all, you're either lying or like, why are you 30 something and you don't have less than 200, at least like $200 in your account? And with that being said, if you don't, if you're on hard times and you don't, it is what it is. You're on hard times and you don't. But why are you spending your last hundred and something to get your hair done? That's what I'm not understanding. So she just, she keeps going back for my shop owner, basically talk to my shop owner like that, uh, that she's uh, calling her a liar, accusing me of making her get extra shit. And she's just saying my boyfriend was expecting more, I just wanted to be blonde. Just arguing, making like no fucking progress. I'm thinking she's about to run out the fucking door. I'm thinking I wanna whoop her ass. I'm thinking I wanna cry, I'm so embarrassed, like, and it really hurt me because I was proud of the work that I did. It'd be different if I was going through this because I fucked up and I just had to fix my mistake. But it looked good. She was just trying to get two sessions for the price of one session with her cheap ass. So eventually, I was sitting there like, at this point, I'm not even saying anything. I'm letting my shop owner handle it. And I just stand up. I'm like, give me all the money that you have. And obviously you wasn't gonna tip the whole time if like literally the only money that you had was like the amount that you told me you could spend. You wasn't gonna tip me from the beginning. Which like, you don't have to tip people, but it makes me feel like you just really don't like it. You know what I mean? Like, it's different if you don't, if you didn't, okay, say you're like a regular client and you just don't have the money this week and you don't tip me, whatever. Or I have little young high schooler clients, like, I get it, you don't have the extra $10, $15. But like, girl, you really, you, you, like, you ain't gonna tip me at all, how am I? I just don't think you, you just don't like it. I don't care if you tell me you like it or not. I very rarely don't get tipped now. Very rarely don't get tipped. I get really, really good tips. Really good tips. But I was just like, I wouldn't go get tipped the whole time. I didn't working on your ass for five, six, seven hours. So finally, I'm just like, to hell with this. Like, I'm keeping my shop owner from getting her son. This lady finna have me call the cops. 
So I'm just like, give me the money that you have. And I was like, I'm done with you. Um, I will never be doing your hair again and just leave. And I looked at my shop owner and I was like, because keep in mind, I'm commissioned. So like she, she, my shop owner bought all those products that I used on her. That was all her products. And I owe her a cut of whatever this, whatever Jezebel pays me. So I had told her, I was like, if you need to take it out of my paycheck, just take it out of my paycheck because I'm, she's not worth me dealing with her, like right in front of her. Which my shop owner, she didn't do that. She didn't. And the girl's just kind of like, okay. And so obviously she didn't tip. She didn't pay. I don't even remember how much she ended up fucking handing me. But she paid whatever she wanted to pay. And she left. And then I walked to the other side of my lawn and I just like cried. Everybody was like, you straight? I was like, look, I ain't crying because she hurt my fucking feelings. I'm crying because I want to beat a bitch ass, but I'm just not, I'm not going to beat the bitch ass in this business. <clears throat> so yeah, that is the story of a time that my a client tried to leave without paying me. She really did leave without paying me everything she owed me, but... It's not like she like, I know some people have literally had people like run out on them. She didn't literally like run out. She was looking like she was running. Cause we was right next to the door and she was getting a little too close to it. I think that if I didn't just go ahead and say, just pay me what you got, she was finna. <laughs> and I was finna <laughs> to her workplace. So yeah, in hindsight, if that was now, either you're gonna pay me, I'm gonna whoop your ass, or I'm gonna call the cops. Or I'm gonna do all three, but in a different order. I'm gonna call the cops, I'm gonna whoop your ass, and then you're gonna pay me. Because you're not finna rob me. You're literally robbing me. You might as well stick your hand in my pocket and take it out. You're not finna mess with my money. I don't play that. That's very rude. And you're not gonna call me a liar to my face. And that's why I like to discuss prices and messages a lot more than in person. <clears throat> Because also the amount of times that I've had people message me and ask me a million questions and it finally gets to like, okay, here's the cancellation policy, blah, blah, blah. That's when they want to start asking how much the service is. And it's like, they're always like, it's too much. Like if they waited to that point, if, if the price was a concern, if you knew you had a budget, that should have been your first question. Why are you asking me? All these other questions and the main question is like how much it is i mean like you don't have to be rude about it you don't have to just slide my i have people slide in and they don't even say hey they're like how much is blah 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 that's rude but you could be like hey how are you i'm really interested in booking um i just wanted to know do you have like a service list or price list totally accessible but anyways i hate when people ask me a million questions and then you come to the price part and they talk about it's too much no, what is too much is all that time you took up me answering these questions. You ain't even trying to be a client. A lot of times I have people to, um, it's more so than they want to spend money on their kids. Like I have people message me trying to book something for their kids and I don't charge them adult prices, but I charge them. I'm not going to charge you cheaper just because you're a kid ain't been on this planet a certain amount of years. If your kid got a full head of hair, you getting a full head of hair price. And some people don't like that. But I'm like, you, some of these kids have more hair than their parents. And take, their hair takes longer than their parents. So why am I charging you cheaper just because you ain't had as many trips around the sun? That don't make sense to me. And so a lot of times people will dead ass ask me questions about kids prices and they don't like them. And so they'll be like, I'm not trying to spend that much on my kid. And then they'll turn around and, and book with me for something that they want. Or they'll ask me for something they want. Like, cause they have no problem paying for their self, but they're not gonna pay for the kid. I have that happen a lot. But I get it. It's just not, you don't want to spend that on your kid. Don't spend it on your kid. So yeah, that's the story 
I'm trying to think if I left anything out. That was it. I never heard from her again. My shop owner banned her from coming to the salon and seeing anybody. And I haven't seen her since and I don't live there. I haven't lived there for over two years. And that nothing like that has ever happened to me again. I've had people like, if anybody ever had a problem with what I was trying to charge them at checkout, they never said anything. They just paid it. Huh? So yep, yeah, that's gonna be all for today. Um, I don't know when I'm gonna film the other story time and I don't know if I wanna do another like mukbang or whatever. I don't really know what other food to eat. I know a lot of people do like Jamaican and stuff like that. Um, but I'll either do that or I'll do like, uh, like a get ready with me. Oh, let me open the door. So that's the story. Um, I can't remember the last thing that I said before I answered the door. I hope I don't get switch things. Um, damn, y'all are really fucking with the braids, okay? So I posted my first little, like, uh, picture on my story with the braids, like, all done up. And y'all was fucking with the braids. My phone keep going off. Um, I got, like, almost 20 unread messages on this hoe on my Instagram. <laughs> uh what was i saying but yeah i've never had that happen if that was to happen now i'd handle oh i was saying that people don't really say anything about my prices they just pay it <laughs> oh i think i was saying i want to do the next one i don't know if i want to do a move thing because i don't know what to eat Cause this one I did seafood. I'm not doing seafood yet. I know a lot of people do Jamaican, so I might do that, or I might um, do like a get ready with me and just do my makeup. The only thing is, is like I wear eyelash extensions. I don't do my eyebrows. Like I just put gel in them. These are my eyebrows, and I don't really wear eyeshadow. I might put like one brown shadow on, so it doesn't take me long to do my makeup. And that story is kind of lengthy. It's either about the same length as this story or a little bit longer. Probably a little bit longer. I remember that story a little bit better than this one. Because <clears throat> it was just too much. But yeah. Anyway, so. That's going to be it for this video. If you like the little story time or whatever, comment down below. If you want to hear my story time about my elderly racist client that I had um and then also comment if i should like do another mukbang if i should do another mukbang what should i eat and if or if i should just do like a get ready with me where i do my makeup and and tell the story because i want to do something while i'm telling the story i don't want to just like tell it i won't know what to do with my hands but that's all um i hope you enjoyed thank you the girls is going crazy on the gram I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, make sure to check all my links out in the bio so you can follow me on my other socials. And yeah, I don't know what the next video will be. I don't know if it'll be story time, a grip ready with me, or a vlog. It'll probably be a vlog because that's mainly what I've been doing. But yeah, just make sure you comment down below, like this video, and subscribe. Bye.